Hi everybody, this is Kelsey Ann Lovelady with the next part of my How to Use Dungeons and Dragons to Write a Book series. Today we're going to start with the outlining process, which is going to uh, make the character creation sheets that we did um, the last couple of weeks come become very useful. So, um, to, first of all, for this process, you're obviously going to need a Word document. And you're going to want to title it after your book. For this purposes, I'm just going to call this the How to Use D&D &D to Write a Novel. And then below it, since we're working with Bello uh, Celeste Bellicose, I'm going to write Celeste Bellicose Outline. Um... Obviously, the next thing you're going to need is actually a set of Dungeons & Dragons dice. You're going to need your D20, your D6s, your D8s, your D12s, your D10s, your D4s. You're going to need at least one of each of these. So, um, if you don't have some, you can find some cheaply at like a Hastings, if Hastings is still in business where you are. Um, ours just went out of business this year. Fortunately, we have a little game store pretty much right across from the Taco John's here, so. Um, but yeah, uh, depending upon what kind of dice you get, they can be either very, very cheap or very, very expensive. Um, if this, if you're never going to actually play Dungeons & Dragons, just get yourself some cheap dice. It's okay. They all work. Okay, so how do we begin the outlining process? Well, you have to know where you want the story to go. Now, I've never actually done an outline with a spellcaster before, so the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to start off by writing down what spells uh, Celeste has memorized for the day. So, and you do not have to memorize your character's spells off the bat because you can just keep your little character sheet in the back. So, um, I'm just going to write these out. Like I said, I've never worked with a spellcaster before, so this is actually kind of a new experience for me, as well as it is for you guys. Um, I'm not actually sure how this is going to work with a spellcaster, so I'm actually kind of excited to learn. And actually, you know what I'm going to do, you guys? I'm going to pause the recording so that you guys don't have to be bored watching me type this in, so be right back in just a second. All right, guys, sorry about that. We are back. I've gotten all the spells writ down, written down. <laughs> it's Friday. Sorry, guys. Um, one thing I did forget to mention is that if you're dealing with a character like a spellcaster, it might be a good idea to either get the Dungeons & Dragons player handbook so that you know, so that you can quickly look up how the spells work. And if you don't want to do that because they can be expensive, um... You can pretty much find anything about Dungeons & Dragons on the internet, so if you just Google spells, you'll be able to find what spells certain classes can have and what each of those spells can do. So, um, these are all the spells that Celeste has at the beginning of the book. Um, <clears throat> now, I know where I would like this to start. I'd like this to start sometime in the evening, and Celeste is working at her shop. She owns a clock shop. Yeah, <laughs> probably nearly out of business, but she owns a clock shop. Uh, while her roommates um, kind of go out and do their thing. One of them is a medical student. One of them is uh, trying to start her own band with little to no success. And one of them is just kind of trying to wander around, find herself, trying to figure out what she's good for in this world. So uh, Celeste is going to be at the shop with dinner all ready. She's going to have grabbed some Chinese food. Now, as they eat dinner, I want the girls to be asking Celeste about what she does all day because they think, well, she can't be doing much. She's, she must be bored all day long.
Now, what Celeste actually does during the day is work on her time spells specifically and some equipment that she has. But she can't tell her friends that because they don't know that she's a wizard. So she says she's going to tell them a lie. Um, What lie is she going to tell them? She's going to tell them that she in, she keeps herself occupied by fixing uh, clocks that other people bring in. Now, this is where we start getting into the dice rolling because Celeste is technically telling a lie to the girls. So she'd have to make a deception check. Now, a deception check is based off of your uh, charisma, I think. I gotta zoom in and... Yeah, it's based off of charisma. And Celeste has a charisma of 11, which means she has no positive modifier and she's not proficient in deception. So she's not going to get a whole lot of bonuses from this. So let's see what number she rolls on a d20. Oh, that's a 2. That's not very good. That's not very good. So now what we have to do is see how her roommates fare against her. Um, they're going to make an insight check. And now the only way that they're going to be able to buy her lie or at least be confounded enough to not ask any more questions is if they basically roll a natural one. So um, chances of that happening are very, very low. But who knows? We might get lucky. Nope, that's a 15. <laughs> Now, normally I would go through each one of her roommates with their own specific character sheets and roll individual insight checks for all of them. But since I don't have the character sheets ready, I'm going to do what I do when there's a large group of unnamed people who I need to roll for. So I just roll the d20 once and have that one number count for all of them. So, because the girls rolled higher than Celeste, um, they can tell that she's lying. And they start asking more questions. So, she comes up with a different lie. Um, because they take place in San Francisco, I'm going to say that she is secretly... That her lie is that she's secretly selling pot from behind the store. Now let's see if she does better on this deception check. Ooh, that's an 18. That's that's pretty good. Now for her roommate's insight check again. Fourteen. They believe her. All and I can tell that I know that one of her roommates would be very, very angry at her for not sharing the pot. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to have Celeste promise her the next batch. Now, in this case, Celeste would have to make a persuasion check, which, again, is a charm, is a charisma um, check, so...
Sorry about that, guys. I was having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties with my recorder. But as I was saying, Celeste has to make a persuasion check, which is a charisma-based check. So let's roll and see what happens. Oh, that's a nine. That's... Yeah. It's below average. So... Now we have to see how the one roommate does against her persuasion check, and that's another insight check. That's an 18. So how does the roommate deal with this when Celeste isn't, you know, giving her what she really, really wants? Um, she kind of ups her bargain. The roommate is unimpressed with the offer. So Celeste says she'll even buy her a six pack of beer. This girl is underage, by the way. She cannot be drinking alcohol, so this this might be what she needs. Celeste has to make another persuasion check. Another 18. That's not bad. Now let's see how her roommate does against it. <laughs> That's a natural freaking 20. God damn it. <laughs> okay, so... To clarify, a natural 20 is basically epic win. So this, yeah, there was no getting around this. Unless Celeste had rolled a natural 20 as well, there was no getting around this. So the roommates says that if Celeste makes it two packs of beer... She won't rat out Celeste to the cops. I don't know if marijuana is legal in California. I would say it is. Um, I live in Colorado. I, no, I live in Wyoming, which is above Colorado, which obviously uh, marijuana is legalized. But I'm going with the, for the story, I'm going with that it's not legalized. So now the roommate has to make a persuasion check. That's an 18. That's going to be tough to beat. Ha! Natural 20! They just switched their roles. <laughs> so Celeste wins this one. Celeste agrees. And the conversation ends. And actually, it wouldn't be so much of an inside check as it is a deception check on Celeste's part because she's agreeing to it just to get the conversation to stop. So, yeah, this is more of a deception check than an inside check. Alright, so dinner is over. The girls do their individual things. And they get ready for bed. Now, looking back at Celeste's spells, she's got a lot of protection spells and stuff that could be used as kind of a home security system. So I'm just going to look up, look up a couple of these and see what she would cast before going to bed to kind of lock up the shop. Now, let me see. Which ones did she have again? Um... Let me see. La, 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 la. Okay. Um, you'll see that one of her spells is Alarm. Now, Alarm is a first level abjuration or ritual spell. Um, it takes one minute to cast it. It has a range of 30 feet, which is not bad. You need verbal components, um, material components, and sacrifice components. I think that's what the S stands for. I need to double check that. Um, and in this particular case, the components that you need is a tiny bell and a piece of silver wire. So she's basically making a trip wire. 
and it lasts for eight hours. You set an alarm against unwanted intrusion. Choose a door, a window, or an area within range that is no larger than a th than a 20 foot cube. Until the spell ends, an alarm alerts you whenever a tiny or large creature touches or enters the warded area. When you cast the spell, you, you can designate creatures that won't set off the alarm. You also choose whether the alarm is me mental or audible. A mental alarm alerts you with a ping in your mind if you are within one mile of the warded area. This ping awakens you if you are sleeping. An audible alarm produces the sound of a handbell for 10 seconds within 60 feet. So in, in Celeste's case, I'm going to have her set a mental alarm at her front door. Um, let me see here. I don't think she needs to roll for that. I think you only roll if it's like a, um, if it's an attack roll. But in the case of this, um, in order for somebody to get past her alarm without setting it off, they would have to roll above a 14 because that is Celeste's spell DC. So... Now what uh, now what other spells does Celeste have that are protection? Um there is protection from evil. We could always uh throw that in. I I imagine Celeste being somewhat kind of paranoid due to her past. Um which none of you know because I'm working on the book for it right now. But I imagine her being exceedingly paranoid because of what she's dealt with in the past now. Um, protection of, from evil. Protection from evil. Protection from evil and good. Depending upon your character, you can protect from either. This is also a first level abjuration. It takes one action to cast. So if you're casting it during um, a fight scene, you have to take part of your round to cast it. Um... Oh, that's within range of touch, so she wouldn't actually cast that. So Okay, so we can actually forget about that. But she might put up a shield. Let's look. Let's see what shield is like. Shield, 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 shield. I do not have the entire player's handbook memorized. Sorry, guys, but that's not possible. Okay. Shield. First level abjuration. Casting time. It takes one reaction. So when like someone attacks you, you can have a reaction, but you only get one per turn. Um, so casting time is one reaction, which you can take when you are hit by an attack or targeted by the magic missile spell. This is a range on yourself. So again, probably would not work. But maybe arcane lock will work. What does she have? Uh, da, 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 ba, ba. Arcane lock. Ar arcane lock. Okay. Second level abjuration. This takes one action. And it's touch. Um, verbal sacrifice material. She must sacrifice gold dust that is worth 25 gold pieces. Um, which the spell consumes. And it can go until it is dispelled. When you touch a closed door, window, gate, chest, or other entryway, it becomes locked for the duration. Um, you and the creatures you designate when you cast this spell can open the object normally. You can also set a password that, when spoken within five feet of the object, suppresses the, this spell for one minute. Otherwise, it is impassable until it is broken or the spell is dispelled or suppressed. Casting knock on the object suppresses arcane lock for 10 minutes. While affected by this spell, the object is more difficult to break or force open. The DC to break it or pick it and any locks increases by 10. Okay. Um, so that would actually work. So Celeste is also going to cast arcane lock.
And I actually looked up the DC of a wooden door, what it normally is. Nor to break it, it has a DC of 18. So by adding a DC of 20 with Arcane Lock, it takes it up to 28. So this, this door is going to be difficult to break. Alrighty. Now, what other spells does Celeste have? Um, Tech Thoughts, Blank, Counterspell, Spell Magic. Okay, I think she's good for the night. But the thing is, she's also casting this with her roommates there, so she's going to have to be really stealthy about it. I'm going to make this a sleight of hand check. Well, it could be... I'm going to do both uh, stealth and sleight of hand because on the one hand she has to be dexterous enough to set the clock and on the other hand she has to be quiet enough to uh, set the lock. So um, for her sleight, now sleight of hand and stealth are uh, dexterity checks so she gets a plus two modifier. So for sleight of hand, that's a four. So, six, and for stealth, <laughs> that's a seven. So, chances are that's below everybody else's passive perception, so they have to notice her. So they hear her and they ask her, what is she doing? Um, Celeste is going to lie. Um, what lie does she tell this time? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Hmm. Well, maybe she doesn't have to lie in this case. She just says she, she's locking up. It's not necessarily a lie. She just doesn't go into uh, details. This could either be deception or persuasion. Take your pick. Either way, same thing. So, that's a 19. That's not bad. Now, the insight for the roommates is a three they believe her they completely believe her so all the girls go to bed now this is where things get really interesting because we're gonna have some intruders come in you guys may remember from celeste character sheets this reverend eli hopkins he and his men are going to enter the scene And his men try to break in. Um, while while e while Reverend Hopkins is not going to be doing the breaking in, the men are going to be doing the breaking in. So they're going to have to make a strength check. That's a two. That sucks. And the fact of the matter is that they are not trying to be stealthy about this at all. They are being very, very loud. So all the girls wake up. The men are going to make another strength check. That's a six. That's a no bueno. All the girls go downstairs to see what's going on. Um, 
Um, Celeste is going to make an... Well, Celeste would make a perception check. She's She would take a look to see if any of her uh, locks are broken and if what what exactly is going on. Now, perception is... That's a wisdom. So she gets plus three to her rolls this time. Uh, that's a 13, so 16. That's not horrible. Um, the girls will also make perception checks. Those are 12. Um, so they don't notice any of, like, uh, Celeste's locks, but she notices them, and she notices that they're still intact. Um, one of the roommates is going to go to open the door, but Celeste is going to stop her. Saying that it could be, um, burglars. Or murderer, take your pick. I think Celeste actually knows what's going on in this case, so this is technically a deception on her part. 15, that's not bad, that's not bad. And the roommates are gonna make another insight check on her. That's a 10. So, they, she's successfully scared them, so... She's going to persuade them to sneak into her garage and hide in her van. Actually, by this point, uh, the men would have made another strength check. Seventeen. Not bad, but no cigar. Um, so Celeste tells the girls to go hide in her van. She has to make a persuasion check. Ten. Um, who knows how that's gonna work. That's cocked. That's a seven. So the girls do listen to her and they go to the van. So now they're all going to have to make stealth checks. Celeste. Gets a stealth of eight. <laughs> that sucks. The roommates are going to have a stealth of 16. They do much better than she does. Um, now we have to roll uh, the, the uh, perception for... Well, actually, because Celeste rolled so low on her stealth check... Um, Reverend Hopkins and the men probably would have noticed Celeste because their passive perception is higher than the stealth check that she rolled. So... At 
They probably don't see her, but they hear her. So, Reverend Hopkins is going to send the men around the side of the building to see if they've got another way in. Um, so now the men have to roll a stealth check to see if they can take the girls by surprise. That's a 10. And that's going to be higher than most of the girls' passive... That's going to be lower than most of the girls' passive perception. Um, it is certainly lower than Celeste, so they know that the men are coming around. And they make a break for the van. So now this is where we get into the combat part of things. This is where everybody's got to roll initiative to see where in uh, the combat lineup they go. So um, I roll initiative first and then I put them in order from highest to lowest so that I know who's going when and where. Celeste's initiative, that's an eight. That's not super good, but her initiative is six. So eight plus six, that's 14. It's not horrible. The roommates roll an initiative of 12. So they're going after her. Reverend Hopkins rolls an initiative of 17. Jesus. And the men roll an initiative of 16. So the order is going to be Reverend Hopkins, uh, his men, Celeste, and then the girls. So this is where we get into combat. Round one. What is Hopkins going to do first? Well... Um, because he's probably a paladin or, um, yeah, I'm going to get, go with the fact that he's a paladin. Let me look up what he would do. He gets, now in combat, you get two actions and then movement. So, um, actually, you know what, guys, I'm going to save this for the next video because this is already a super long video and combat is going to make this even longer. So I'll see you guys next time. I'm sorry that this was kind of haphazard. I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants, but that's the way you do it with Dungeons and Dragons. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.